Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Explode, your expert business show. And today I'm here with our GTX Lifetime member, Stella Maher. How are you doing, Stella? I'm great, thank you. Simone, how are you? I'm really well, thank you very much. Uh, today's interview day, so I've been uh, recording uh, interviews back to back. I love interview days because uh, I get to uh, talk to incredible people like yourself. So. <laughs> I've never considered myself as incredible. <laughs> uh, well, you, you definitely are. I know you, I know you, and I know that you, you definitely are. That's very kind. <laughs> you, you're welcome. So let's. we're going to get to to know you a bit better here on the show today. So I would love to start with uh, a bit more about what you do right now and uh, the work that you do. So I am a confidence coach to young women and I am also the founder of the Lioness Within Coaching. I'm very passionate about helping young women to rediscover that self-assured, confident person that is within them. Uh, I love helping them to um, connect with the, the beauty they have within them and with the strength that they have within them so that they can start to take control of their lives and believe in themselves. I'm very passionate about doing that because I believe that every young person has something inside of them that they are not even aware of. Mm -hmm. So I love to connect them with that strength. And that's why I called my business The Lioness Within. That's, that's absolutely beautiful. Um, what inspired you to do what you do now? What inspired you to go into confidence coaches in particular for, for, for teenage girls? Well, um, I was inspired to do this because as a teenage girl myself, I struggled very much with confidence. I struggled with body confidence in particular. I had a very poor self-image as a result of some of the experiences I had. Um, which I won't go into detail, but I was bullied for my appearance and I was made fun of and I was called all sorts of names and that affected my, my confidence greatly. It made me feel very insecure and very self-conscious about my appearance and, and really socially um, awkward and I, I hated myself, in fact. And that's why I do what I do now. Uh, is there, um, uh, how, how did you, because I don't want to go into much into details on if you don't want to, but is there, um, how did you uh, overcome those years? Because uh, I know that you've done like a, a lot of personal development uh, growing yes. up and to, to change also yes. your mindset and yourself as, as yes. a woman. But how did you navigate those years? How did you uh, like come out on the other side? Uh, well, I, I said, experiencing it. Yes, I, I, I um, at first it was really difficult, but then um, as I got older and I started working, um, I found that I was still struggling very much with, mm. with confidence, even though people told me that I looked very confident and I appeared really sure of myself, but I knew that deep down I wasn't. And that's when I knew I had to do something about it. So I, I started attending personal development courses and and reading books and watching DVDs. And, and I really fell in love, you know, with personal development so much that I decided to retrain as a coach from being a confidential secretary and PA. I, I changed over to become a, a life coach. Um, is, was, um, do you remember, like, a, a, if, if, if there was a, a particular moment where, you know, you felt a shift uh, within you, you felt almost like the penny dropped? Is there... A particular moment where that happened? Yes, the penny dropped when I I, I had um, a first business that I was doing. Mm -hmm. It was the network marketing business. Mm -hmm. And it was while I was in the process of building this business that I realized, because it, it involved going to meet people, mm -hmm. going to talk to people, training, building a team. And I really struggled with that. And that's when the penny dropped. And that's when I knew I needed to do something about my confidence. And I knew I needed to really do something about it. And that's when I decided to become a coach. Because I knew that if I trained as a coach and I started helping other people to achieve their goals, that I would also achieve my own goals. Mm -hmm. And um, is there something that... Um 
you, like a tool or a technique or something that you've learned that you've done for yourself that you found that helped you with your confidence that was more effective than others because um, you know when you're training as a coach uh, mm -hmm. you learn a bunch of different techniques and uh, oh, yeah. there are some that are more effective for people and some that are less effective which one uh, was the most effective for you for me it was uh at the, using affirmations I really love to use affirmations. It felt really weird at first, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> talking to myself and telling myself I was wonderful, I was great, something that I just didn't believe about myself. But I found that the, the more I practiced, the better I got at it and the more confident I became. And I did this every morning. I will come in here and I will stick a, a piece of paper on, on the wall and read, read out all the qualities I felt I, I possessed and I owned it and I kept doing it and I kept doing it until it became sort of second nature to me. Is there, um, what kind of affirmation were, were you saying? What? I would say things like you are capable of so much more than you believe. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to achieve your dreams. You are beautiful. Mm -hmm are uh, elegant all the things that i didn't believe about, about myself you are confident mm -hmm. you are a great friend you are an achiever things like that it, 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 just, it, depend, it depended on how i felt really but these are some of the things i would say to myself and i would also i learned the technique uh, during my coaching i've forgotten what it's called i think it's an LF, nlp technique mm -hmm. where you sort of step into somebody else mm -hmm. You know, you imagine um, like a role model, mm -hmm. like admire, and somebody I really admire for her strength and her achievements <coughs> is Michelle Obama and yeah. Winfrey. And sometimes I would use two of them. You know, you step into literally step into their body, yeah, and 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 embody who they are. And for a few minutes, well, you ask them for permission first. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it's all right. If I kind of step into you mm -hmm. and become you for a few minutes so that I can solve this problem I have or I can um, empower myself to face the day, and that's how it starts. It's a bit weird because I mean, they can't hear you, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I found that I, I, I could do that. And... Um, yeah, and I, I tried that with with a few other people as well. Uh, what is a uh, what is something about uh, let's say Michelle Obama or Oprah Winfrey that uh, uh, that you admire a lot? I admire their strength. I admire the fact that they they have built this huge following, and I admire that they 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 are very kind they're both very kind and they've helped a lot of women they've also helped a lot of young people i admire their charity work i admire the influence they have over others and i want to be like them mm -hmm. another woman i really admire is jo malone i don't know if you know her she's no. a british perfumer mm -hmm. she's a british I've heard, I've heard, perfumer. yeah, I've heard yeah. About unlike the, myself the, the she brand. survived very aggressive breast cancer mm -hmm. She was actually quite dyslexic at school and left with no qualifications. But she went on to build this huge business that she sold to Estelle Lauder for millions. Mm -hmm. and set up a perfumery now. And, and I love her quote. There's a quote of hers that I really love that she used mm -hmm. the last time she was interviewed on BBC. And she said that, I'll try and remember it now, don't be defined by other people's expectations of you. Mm -hmm. You own your life and you own your dreams. Go out there and make them come true. Mm -hmm. I really love that quote. Yeah, absolutely. It's incredibly powerful. And yes, we are. Um, I think there's a lot of times we, we will play your smaller game or a different game just yes. because we want to. Uh, we look at uh, what other people are thinking about us and yes. what other people are saying about us. I mean, I remember when. Uh, um, when I was a kid, uh, I I had a lot of I loved, for example, like rock metal music, yes. and so it was. Um, I was a bit the outsider, and uh, um, it made me a lot of time think that uh, I 
or or I, for example, one of the things I was doing, I was really good at school. And you know, mm. when you're a kid and you're really good at school, they, <laughs> you're not the most popular. <laughs> Exactly, let's put it this way. And I remember it was very, very tough um, uh, to a point that I said to myself, I don't want to become good, as, I don't want to be good at school anymore. And I um, conformed to what the, the cool kids want, not wanted me to be, but what I what I thought the cool kids wanted me to be and, uh, and not being myself anymore. Um, I believe that uh, you know we, we all have different people that influence us through, yeah. throughout our lives. Uh, people that are close to us can be family members or people that we meet uh, along the way. Uh, uh, do you have a person that jumps to mind right now uh, that influenced you in, uh, in your life, uh, whatever situation may be? I think my, the greatest influencer I've, I've had in my life, I would say, um, is my dad when well, he's passed away mm -hmm. and he was um, a teacher he was very much an academic mm -hmm. and he was uh, for for most of the time that we were growing up he was a school principal and we were always moving from school to school so I, I grew up living in school compounds <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and he loved music and I think I got my love of music from mm -hmm. her from him as well so um Yes, I, I think I think first and foremost, he really influenced me. My mom was a teacher as well, and um, mm -hmm. learned a lot of things from her. So, I have um, I come from a background of um, education. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, my, my dad really influenced me to to become the best I could possibly be and go for whatever I wanted to do with my life. My parents actually gave us the freedom, you know, and. Unlike some parents that wouldn't, coming from a Nigerian background, mm -hmm. you know, parents want their children to be doctors or lawyers mm -hmm. or, or some famous um, academic. But yeah. my parents just said, do whatever you want. Be whoever you, you want to be. Do something that you want, as long as it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> as the, I, like, I, like, I like the caveat, as long as, as, long as it's legal. <laughs> Well, so you, you both your parents were were academic. Uh, your yeah. mom and your dad were academic. Um, how was for you growing up in an academic household? I mean, did you have uh, um, expectations that you had to perform better at schools because, yes. um, or were you naturally good at school? Like, how were you living that situation? Um, it was difficult because I tried to live up to my dad's expectations, and I felt academically, and I felt that I didn't. Mm -hmm. I felt like I didn't. I struggled in subjects like maths mm -hmm. and sciences. Strangely enough, strangely enough, I loved biology. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't do well in physics and chemistry, which was really weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved English and I loved literature. Mm -hmm. And I did really well in those subjects. Uh, so I loved, I loved to read books. I loved stories. And I loved to get lost. Back then, we didn't have any computer games. And... Mm -hmm. And I love to get lost in stories, and so um, that's that's um, yeah, bit I can remember about growing up. <laughs> sure. So um, uh, coming from an academic background, uh, and so your were your parents a first uh, generation immigrants? Um, so they were, they, they they came from Nigeria. Your parents to the UK no. or? No, no, no. My parents did not live in the UK. So they you visited. you. They, they visited the UK. So you, yes. when when did you uh, come to the UK? Oh gosh, um, that's about twenty years ago. Right? How did you end up in the UK? Oh gosh, that's another long story. <laughs> we got time. <laughs> maybe maybe <laughs> for some other time. It's, it's a rather sad story. It's about my late brother. Actually, he um, came here to be treated for leukemia. He subsequently died. Mm -hmm. We all had to come to test. For whether we, we we could be a match for a um, to be a, um, a bone marrow donor for him, mm -hmm. so we all came here, and I had to give up my job in Lagos, <coughs> and I had to look after him while he was in hospital. Mm -hmm. Eventually, my other my sister had to go back, and my siblings other siblings had to go back because they had families. I was the only one who didn't, so I stayed on uh, until he died, and and then I thought what the hell am I going back for? I might as well just make my life here. So I I got a job here and um, 
eventually met my husband here and mm. and that's it really and that's how old <laughs> how old were you at the time when you when you when you decided to stay here uh oh do i have to tell you <laughs> oh well if you want to <laughs> or you can give us uh, uh we have I, I have no reference how many years ago it was so um, if you want to say you can say otherwise now <laughs> uh was in my early 30s early. and so uh, the reason why i'm asking is mainly because i want to check it i would love to know how is for you now like um, integrating yourself in 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 the in the world here in the uk because mm, uh, it was strange at first yeah yeah, it was strange at first. Um, I struggled with the food. I struggled with. I didn't struggle with much actually. It wasn't that difficult to integrate. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I just had found out how things were done, and I just sort of um, cooked. Yeah. But I struggled with the food. I found it bland. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're talking. You're talking to an Italian right now. So yes. So I quickly, <laughs> I quickly fell in love with a Thai restaurant nearby. <laughs> And the first thing I did when I, I met my husband was to introduce him to it. Because I, I, I fell in love with Thai food very quickly because I found that they they cooked food similar to the way we cook in Nigeria. And mm -hmm. they, they, they use spices and really fragrant spices. And and um, I love that. <laughs> so. is, there, is there something you miss about Nigeria? Um, I miss the weather and I miss the food. Mm -hmm. But but um, you can get the food here. Maybe not all aspects of it. Mm -hmm. Not quite the same way you you get it in Nigeria. But to some extent, there are shops here now that sell a lot of the food we have back in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. so, so, but uh, I miss I miss the weather. The, the, well, the weather is a bit more difficult to get back. <laughs> yes. Um, was there something that uh, surprised you, maybe about yourself, uh, or a new aspect of yourself that you have? discovered once you moved to 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 the uk um, the reason why i'm asking this question is because uh, i mean i didn't uh, have such a, like a huge shift of culture like maybe mm -hmm. you did because from from nigeria from lagos to london to the uk mm -hmm. it is a, a cultural shift uh, mm -hmm. being italian and coming to london um, mm -hmm. there is a language shift there is a cultural shift but i remember that coming to a new country i've discovered such things about myself that I didn't know I had in me mm -hmm. um, or I didn't other sides of my character that came out just because I didn't have people around me that uh, yeah. have been knowing me for all my life mm -hmm. so is there something about yourself that you discovered uh, something new about yourself that you discovered by coming here I suppose um, I discovered very quickly how tough I was I never really considered myself as, as tough and strong, but I found out that I was when I had to live here and adapt, especially um, watching my brother die from leukemia. Mm. And I had to get over that quickly and because it, it was, we were, I was still quite new here then. I had to, I had to quickly cope and we, we, I had to move out from where we were all living together and find myself um, an accommodation of my own. Mm -hmm. So those were really tough times. And I felt that if I could overcome those times, that I would be able to face just about anything, really. Mm -hmm. um, so now moving moving forward, uh, um, you mentioned that uh, you suffered with, uh, with breast cancer. And uh, now you're doing uh, incredible work uh, um, with, uh, with charities that support women with breast cancer. Uh, you've been also on the cover of magazines uh, as uh, the face uh, uh, for, for, for the charity that you support. Uh, how was uh, uh, for you going through that experience? Um, yeah, that's, that was an, um, another shocker in my life, actually, because the, <laughs> if anyone ever told me I would get breast cancer, I wouldn't have believed it because I considered myself quite healthy mm -hmm. and I, 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 I ate reasonably healthy food mm -hmm. and I exercised quite regularly. I love mm -hmm. to be fit and I don't joke with that. And and even while I was that being diagnosed with cancer, I was actually training to go for a run to raise funds for cancer research. <laughs> so so wow. the day, I, yes, the day before I had my first surgery, I did a five K run to raise funds for cancer research UK. <laughs> and the following Monday Monday I went into hospital and had my first surgery. 
I've been training for it with no idea I had cancer. Mm-hmm. That's that's how, how much I loved to keep fit. I used to go for runs and, and exercises. So when I was diagnosed with cancer, I was really shocked. It was like, I said to the doctor, but I thought if you kept healthy and mm-hmm. did everything you were supposed to do, that you, you don't get cancer. And no, but no one in my family has ever had breast cancer as well. Mm-hmm. And they said, well, it doesn't work that way. You can still get it, even if you are healthy. And even, even if no one in your family has ever had it. And I was just simply gobsmacked. And it made me wonder, just for a brief second, why bother then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, eating, I'm eating all my vegetables. I'm eating all my salads. I was I'm... proud of all of that. And I still got cancer. But then I, I realized quickly as well that I was, it was silly to think that way. Because... Mm. Because they, one thing they told me was that the fact that I'd been really keeping fit and healthy would help me to recover quickly mm-hmm. from cancer or, or much better yes. than other people from cancer. And they were right, it did. It did. I made a, a really good recovery, not necessarily a quick recovery, because mm-hmm. it took almost a year to completely get back to my normal self. Did, did you ever... Um doubt that things will not get back to normal yes i did doubt i did have doubts you know when the going was really tough i did in fact i thought i was going to die i didn't i didn't even know i was going to survive it when when i was first diagnosed they said it was stage two and then they did the surgery and tested the cancer and came back and told me it was a very aggressive stage three and i thought that's it Hmm. i won't survive this well, the, then the doctor said, well, let's, let's take it one step at a time. You know, mm-hmm. don't, don't jump to conclusions. And um, here I am today. So, what, what, did you do, what did you do to keep strong in those times? Um, I tried to stay positive and I prayed because <laughs> mm-hmm. I have a lot of faith and I... I'm very lucky. I had I had the support of my family and friends as well, so that mm-hmm. helped a great deal. Uh, th- those were really tough times, and um, whatever little confidence confidence I was starting to develop then, cancer took all of that away. Because by the time I lost all my hair and all my nails, I lost my hair, my eyebrows, my eyelashes, my fingernails, my toenails, and I could hardly walk. And no, that really dealt a blow on my confidence. It, so I had to rebuild it all over again when I survived from cancer. Um, wow, I'm an, I say, what a story. Yeah. What a story. And uh, I think that uh, for everyone listening, the reason why we're doing these interviews in this way, it is because we can all learn um, from, from each other. We can all learn from yeah, what absolutely. we did to overcome tough moments. You know, for someone can be the cancer, for someone else can be the loss of a business, for someone else can be the loss of a family members. Yeah. And, uh, you know, is, um, we, we can all pretend that the life is going to be all roses and flowers, but the reality is not. not we true. have the roses and flowers moment uh, as well as we have the darker moments. And so, um, uh, it's about enjoying the, the great moments and absolutely. it's about having the tools to, to overcome to over- uh, absolutely so, so thank you very much for sharing mm, I would love to ask you now so all the experiences that you had in your life from moving to another country to being bullied at school to um, uh, going through cancer uh, and, uh, and coming out healthy on the other side uh, how does uh, how does experience influencing you the work that you're now doing with uh, with young women? Um, I I feel really privileged that I'm still here, and that's why I felt that I had to give something back. I I that's why I um I really want to en- encourage young women to love who they are, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I struggled to love who I was back then. I was influenced by other people's opinion of me. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be somebody else because I hated who I was. And I'm trying to get them to realize that they've got this one life, they've got this one body. They have to make a connection with it and really love who they are and appreciate what they are because life is too short. Mm-hmm. And and um, 
and that's why I do what I do. That that's why I do what I do. I feel one thing that cancer taught me is that you can't sit around for long doing nothing because you mm-hmm. can just wake up and and dead and die. You can wake yeah. up and make yourself dead. You know, we don't we don't um, know when our time will come, but whatever time we've got here now, we need to put it to very good use. Absolutely. Well, Stella, it has been a, a fantastic interview. Thank you very much for opening up. Thank you very much for uh, for sharing uh, some of um, the more, um, uh, what, what we can say, intimate also parts of, of your life and uh, and things that you've been through. So I really appreciate it. And I think that everyone that has been listening so far can definitely take a lot of takeaways uh, or sometimes it can just uh, be a reminder that, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter if you have a tough time, and there is always uh, there is always something better after, and Absolutely. and, and so uh, maybe this uh, this interview has served for different purposes. Uh, if someone wants to reach out to you, maybe because they want to interview you on their show, or uh, they want to know a bit more about the things that you do with your the, your programs as well, or they want to get you into schools, uh, uh, what's the best way to reach out to you? They can reach out to me via my uh, Facebook page. Um, it's, um, hold on a minute, let me read it out. <laughs> I don't believe that, I don't know it off heart. It's facebook.com slash confidence coaching for teenage girls. They can reach me there or they can reach me on my Instagram page. My Instagram handle is at the lioness within coaching. Uh, they can also reach me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn com slash in slash mahar stella fantastic um, twitter.com slash conf coach 14 Right, so we'll put uh, we'll put all these uh, the social media links uh, in the show notes, uh, so then uh, uh, you guys can just scroll down. Make sure you follow Stella in their social media accounts uh, and uh, as well connect with her. In particular, if you are the contact in schools, uh, uh, Stella does incredible program for teenage girls. Uh, uh, you have heard her story, so make sure um, uh, you you call her in in your school or if you have an event. She's absolutely phenomenal. All right, Stella, thank, thank you very so much. much. Are you welcome? Uh, thank you very much for being on the show. It has been an thank absolute you. pleasure. Likewise. Thank now, la- you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching or listening. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you subscribe right now so you don't miss any other incredible episode. And uh, we're sharing uh, tactics to grow your business and as well uh, great stories like the one that we have heard today from Stella. So subscribe right now. And until next episode, remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao. <laughs>